Well, welcome. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the weather's turned out pretty good for us, and uh, uh, it's a great day for a very important and um, important announcement and a point of celebration. Uh, this is a, a long time in coming. New Bedford uh, has the distinction of having the oldest stock uh, of elementary schools uh, in the state. The, the school that we are about to talk about today was built during the administration of Grover Cleveland. Um, and it is uh, about time that the city, uh, with the help of the Mass School Building Authority, uh, get down to the business of modernizing our school system. We've done a good job in recent years in, ha in doing it at the middle school level, but our elementary schools have a ways to go, and we're here to announce today uh, the groundbreaking of the brand new uh, Taylor at Sea Lab School, uh, which is the kind of will be the kind of facility our kids deserve. And I'm going to call up uh, in a moment Jack McCarthy uh, from the Mass School Building Authority, uh, with whom we've had uh, a great relationship. This has been a long time coming, and we look forward to this day for a while, Jack, for some uh, certainly a couple of years now, but. Um, this is there's a there's a history here that's probably worth reviewing. Uh, in February of 2013, with the input of the school committee and then Superintendent Mike Shea, uh, I launched and, and and certainly the city council, I launched a plan to kickstart our city's stalled school building projects. Uh, the plan called for the replacement of two elementary schools that serve the families of the South End, Hannigan and Taylor. I saw a real need for modern elementary schools here in the South End, and certainly uh, citywide, again, because our, our kids deserve to have modern school facilities. The plan proposed moving the Taylor School on Brock Avenue into an expanded Sea Lab Marine Science Center building and constructing a new school for Hannigan just off of Brock Avenue. And this is going to be the, the site, as you'll see from the plans. I'm pleased that with the support of the MSBA and working very closely with Jack McCarthy's team all along the way, as well as with the school committee and the city council, we were able to deliver uh, on uh, that plan for our students and our teachers while maximizing the use of state funds and minimizing the local share of the projects. With the city council's support of the plan, the MSBA has approved uh, our plan and has committed to cover 90% of the funding of the construction of this site. Uh, which will total $12.5 million. And as for the Hannigan site, which we'll have our own ceremony for in, uh, in the months to come, 80% of the eligible costs of construction uh, will be picked up by the Commonwealth. With today's um, groundbreaking ceremony, the Taylor School will, uh, project will move into the construction phase. The Hannigan project is now in the design phase. We heard, and we, we, we did all this because we heard from parents that they want to have their kids uh, in modern schools where they can uh, not only, that, that not only efficiently use space, but, but uh, enable uh, our kids to, in, to, um, uh, to enjoy and experience the latest in, uh, in teaching technology and techniques. Uh, these, uh, and we wanted to make sure that we preserved both in this neighborhood as well as in the Hannigan neighborhood, schools of a certain size that, uh, that uh, continue to support the neighborhoods they exist in. Uh, here, this school will be 300 students, and that's about as much as they can they can fit. Uh, over at Hannigan, uh, the school house about 400 students, and it'll take off some of the burden from the Gome School, which is to the north and has about 900 students. So we're, we're we want to redistribute uh, in the long run the way uh, uh, the um, some of the uh, schools have concentrated. Uh, student populations because um, we want our elementary schools to offer an intimate experience. Uh, if in recent years we've built, the city built, uh, before my time, uh, an elementary school that frankly was too large. And principals will tell you that once you, hit, once you get over 450 or so, uh, you, it's very hard to know every kid's name in the school. Uh, we've kept these schools that capped them out at 400 because we want principals to know the name of every single kid in the school so they can feel like they belong there. And that's the key. Uh, this is a commitment to neighborhood schools uh, and the neighborhoods in the South End, and we're not uh, done yet. We're, we are working with MSBA on a number of fronts. We, uh, we'll have more to say uh, in the weeks ahead on some of the work that was done at the high school, again, with 90% state uh, reimbursement funding uh, that will uh, that will enable our, our high school students to, uh, to engage in ways that they haven't uh, in learning that they haven't had uh, before. So we really appreciate 
uh, that work as well. We're working closely with MSBA and replacing many of the opaque windows that we have in many of our elementary schools. Approximately five schools are going to be getting uh, new windows as well. So we've got a, a great relationship with, uh, with MSBA. Uh, it's taken a long time here because it's been this, uh, this project, these projects have been more complicated uh, than most. We had a period in New Bedford where school building projects were complicated by uh, the cleanup of Keith and uh, and I think that uh, candidly had set us back for some uh, period of time, some number of years, but uh, we're back on track in building new schools and we want to continue to keep the pedal to the metal in the years ahead so that all of our students uh, across, the, uh, across the spectrum, across the city, are able to have the same opportunities uh, to learn. So there are a number of people to thank. We're going to introduce a number of folks today, uh, but I'm going to start uh, first with uh, the executive director of the MSBA, Jack McCarthy, uh, who has uh, the very, very tough job of, of sorting through uh, complicated projects across the state, um, but in, in places like New Bedford and smaller communities and wealthy communities and not so wealthy communities. It runs the gamut. Every situation is different. Uh, New Bedford is very different from most. Things are a little more complicated here because of the cleanup and the aftermath, but um, I think it's fair to say we're back on track and it's in no small measure no, and no small part because of all the hard work that you and your team have done with, over, with us over the last few years. So Jack, we really want to thank you and ask you to come up and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Um, on behalf of uh, Treasure, Treasurer Goldberg, I almost said Treasurer Grossman, I'm so used to saying that. Treasurer Goldberg, I just want to, uh, she couldn't be here today. I don't know if you know, but she broke her foot, so her, her public appearances where she has to walk have been diminished a little. Um, I can't say enough about what Mayor Mitchell's done since he has arrived as mayor here. I mean, we met in December before he even took, uh, took the oath of office to figure out how best to attack the problems in New Bedford. And, I, I, you think it took a long time, but compared to a lot of other places, you, you moved very fast. So, uh, and, and, and you took a, a, an approach that makes sense. So I just want to, uh, on behalf of my team, thank you for the leadership that you've shown us. You. And also, uh, Senator Montigny, I know, couldn't be here. He had to be in Boston. But he, along with Representative Cabral, have been real advocates for this project. They've been advocates for the MSBA in general, but for this project especially, I can't tell you the number of calls I've had from both Rep. Cabral and Senator Montigny on this project saying, you know, you got to help us, you got to help us. So, again, thank you for your leadership on that. Um, the mayor went through all of the dollars and, and cents that I was going to tell you on all the projects, but we're happy to be playing a significant role in New Bedford. Um, we toured the, I think it was the Lincoln School that we had done previously, yeah. and we, ha we, had a, we have a very outspoken member of our board who, who is a real education expert. And when she had toured the Lincoln School about five years ago, after we had finished it, she wasn't really excited about what was going on there and so had some trepidations about what we should be doing in New Bedford. But when we went there, and it was the last spring, she couldn't say enough good things of how that building had turned around inside. So again, Mayor, under your leadership and your superintendent, you guys are doing a great job for the kids. Um, this has been the first time I've ever been in this building believe it or not. And when I walked in, I was blown away. And I had a great tour. Is it Simone? It's from Simone. And you guys are doing stuff now and have been doing it for a long time that people are just catching up to. I mean, the fact that you have hands-on experience here as the C-Lab with these children, that's what people are just waking up to right now. And we're trying to design our schools to have that. So you guys have been way ahead of the curve on that. And so I just want to thank you for giving me that tour. I'm impressed by what I see down here, and I look forward to a, a, a long relationship with you guys. So thank you. Thanks, Jack. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jack. We really appreciate that, and we do uh, appreciate the commitment made by uh, Treasurer Goldberg uh, to this project and the others in New Bedford. They really are uh, making a big difference. I am glad that you brought up the name Simon Bourgeois because this is uh, Taylor at Sea Lab. Uh, sea Lab has uh, has been something near and dear not only to uh, to the mother of Sea Lab, Simon Bourgeois. If you, I know she's going to kill me for calling it that, uh, but also for for uh, really two generations of children that have gone through a, a fantastic program, um, including my own kids. It's a 
It's a, uh, it's a world-class program right here in, in New Bedford with a direct view of uh, our, uh, our, our harbor. And uh, Simone, I just want to thank you for not only your stewardship of Sea Lab, but also working through what was, you know, a very complicated um, set of issues and making sure that Sea Lab could stay as Sea Lab and continue to function, not just during the summer, but over the course of uh, the school year, as it does when you bring in uh, elementary school students and then have it at the same time function as a full-time elementary school. It was, we had lots of talk we had, and we were able to work through our through those issues well so that we can have, in effect, two successful programs here, a functioning elementary school for the peninsula, for Clark's Point here, but also the continuation of our first-rate Sea Lab program that benefits uh, all of the kids in the city. So, Simone, thank you so much for that. Um, I, I want to uh, echo uh, Jack's comments about our legislative delegation. Senator Montigny couldn't be here today. Uh, but uh, Tony Cabral is here. I'm going to ask him to come up and say a few words. But Tony has been uh, a stalwart when it comes to supporting uh, funding for MSBA. It's a major commitment uh, by the state to help construct uh, elementary, to construct schools and to maintain schools uh, around the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And, it, and it's a function that not all states have. Not all states uh, have made the commitment to capital funding uh, schools and modernizing school buildings that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has and it's and it's happened uh, in part because there are legislators like Tony who recognize that uh, modern school buildings are, are uh, necessary to uh, uh, increasing student performance uh, and and making uh, communities stronger so Tony thanks for all of your support on the project and I just ask you to come up and say a few words Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here, obviously, in this beautiful part of the South End, uh, just a little piece of my district, uh, and to see uh, what's happening here this morning. It's a long time coming, and I think it's important for the kids of the South End to really have first-class um, elementary schools, as it is important for the rest of the, the children in New Bedford. Uh, you know, the mayor gave you a little history around elementary schools. Let me give you a little history about uh, the uh, school building authority. As you know, in the, in the 90s, the building authority was really not functionable. I mean, it was not really performing what it should be. We decided in the legislature to change that, and we did. And we changed it very effectively by not only changing the way it works and the funding, by placing uh, a one cent of every uh, sales tax, so that when you pay your sales tax, one penny out of that goes to the school building authority. And the great job by placing the building authority actually in the treasurer's office, because uh, those are the folks who invest state money. They know what they do, and they do very, very, very well. And Jack has been an excellent, excellent executive director of, of, of the authority. Uh, and the authority has played a major role in helping cities like New Bedford and across the state to really modernize um, all our schools from elementary to middle to, to high schools. And uh, places like ours, we really need uh, to really capitalize on, on the building authority rules and how it applies to communities such as New Bedford. We used to be a 90% community uh, up until recently. Now we are 80% community. And the only unfortunate thing is we were not able to really accomplish all the building of the new schools or rehab of the schools under the 90%. But the 90% was not uh, feasible going forward uh, in order for the building authority to really uh, work and be able to uh, uh, to apply uh, its resources uh, throughout the state. So, but I think uh, we fought to stay. There are other communities that are not at 80 uh, percent. Others, are, some are 60, some are 40, some others are in different percentages. We fought very hard during that transition period to make sure that we stayed, that New Bedford would stay at the 80 percent, and I think we were successful. Uh, so, I want to thank the mayor for his. Uh, is uh, acknowledgement of the of myself and Senator Montigny and other legislators uh, for the work that we have done. I was fortunate enough to have been in the middle of that debate when we really reformed the school building authority and transformed it. It was not effective under the under the, um, the Department of Education then. Uh, nothing was being built really in reality. We used to take uh, decades to build anything new. So, uh, to 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 the credit of of. Uh, of those who have led also the school building authority, such as Jack, uh, they've done a wonderful job. So I think this is a great day for us, and I'm looking forward uh, for the other 80% for the other projects, along with Hannigan and, and others. I'm hoping that at some point soon we can look at Duvall's, 
school as well, and Rodman and other schools throughout the city, and in particular in the South End. You're talking about Duval, uh, Duval School is pretty old as well. It's about as old as Taylor as well. So I think we need to, we have a lot of work to do, and I know we, we, we are working through the process uh, to make sure that every school in every, neighbor, every neighborhood, be in the South End or any other place in the city, gets what they deserve, and the, ch and the children and the kids in this city get what they deserve, which is modern buildings in order. Because part of learning and part of reforming education really is reforming and having first class facilities so the children can have the best opportunities they can within those facilities. So uh, thank you very much for all of that. And let me just say, you know, Simone is uh, just wonderful, not only around the C Lab, but she's sort of a, a permanent, stable uh, figure here in the South End, in, in C Lab, in this school building in particular. And she's done uh, tremendous work. Her leadership, uh, her leadership skills uh, in, in, in bringing kids together and parents have been um, fantastic for, uh, for the city of New Bethesda. So, Simone, thank you very much for your wonderful work. So, thanks again. And, Let's start the shovel soon, right? <laughs> All right, thank you, Tony. Um, you know, one theme here today is uh, how the modernization of these elementary schools, of our elementary school building stock, is coming at a time when uh, our school system is, is really starting to uh, click. And it's been through an awful lot of hard work over the last four years, uh, beginning with uh, former interim superintendent Mike Shea, who's, uh, who's joined us uh, here in the audience. Mike is, Mike's not the superintendent of anything right now, uh, just, just for the moment, uh, just uh, for the record, but uh, Mike, is, uh, Mike was here when we forged that plan. And uh, Mike, I want to thank you for uh, helping us work through those issues and for uh, obviously for helping bridge um, the, uh, the reform effort from where we started to now with Superintendent Durkin, who's um, up, up in Boston today uh, testifying before a uh, committee concerning uh, standardized testing for the state elementary uh, school board, uh, uh, elementary and secondary education school board about, um, uh, about uh, standardized testing. But uh, we're, uh, we're on the right track. So much has changed in our school district in one of the, of the last few years. It is so much better managed now, and uh, we are uh, well down the track in terms of uh, the reform effort. And it's part of that reform effort is, by, is modernizing the physical plan of our school so that our kids can have what other kids have in other districts. Uh, and in that vein, I just want to say that uh, a big player in all of this is our uh, business manager, Barry Rabinowitz, who's here today. Barry has, uh, again, has sorted through what has often been the thicket of rules and appropriate rules and regulations, but a thicket of them uh, that MSBA uh, has so, uh, that are all there to ensure that the Commonwealth's money is well spent. But um, it, is, it is, can be complicated, especially in a district like ours. And Barry has skillfully shepherded us uh, through that process. And so, Barry, this, this is a big day for you. And I just want to say uh, thanks so much. Al Oliveira, our facilities manager for our school system, is here today. Al uh, has done a, a yeoman's work in keeping our facilities uh, going. And this, uh, Al, this will be just a bigger one for you uh, in, in the not too distant future. Um, in that way, I want to thank uh, uh, the members of the school committee who have, uh, who have been all in when it comes to reform and all in when it comes to uh, modernizing uh, our school system. Uh, here today is the vice chairperson of the school committee, Bruce Oliveira, and school committee members Jack uh, Livermento and Josh Amaral. Thank you guys for being here today. I know uh, Jack Nobriga and Marlene Pollock and Larry Finnerty are all here in spirit. They, they wish they could be here, but uh, we really appreciate um, the support the school committee has applied to the, uh, the process as well. And, in that way, it's a, it's a team effort in the school committee, and in that way, um, uh, this is a big day for the entire committee. Uh, I would just ask uh, Bruce Oliveira to come up and say a few words on, as, in his capacity as chairperson of the committee, and, and uh, uh, Bruce has been there right from the start in terms of figuring out how to get the most out of taxpayer dollars to modernize our school system, and he's the numbers guy in the school committee. Bruce. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's very short. I would just like to say, as a member of the school committee with my colleagues, that we're just honored to be part of this process 
and look forward to the uh, good things it's going to bring for the uh, students in the South End and the students in the city of New Bedford. And we'd like to thank our delegation, the mayor, and Mr. McCarthy and the uh, Mass Building Authority uh, for keeping us on this track. So thank you. Thanks, Bruce. All right, thank you, Bruce. Uh, I want to thank our CFO, Ari Skye, uh, who's here today for, again, uh, helping us figure out uh, a way forward financially, how to make sure that um, the, uh, these projects, these school projects can fit into uh, the city's capital improvement program. The CIP, the capital improvement program, is something new to the city of New Bedford. We never had one before Ari Sky got here. And his contribution in helping us manage our capital projects in a, uh, in a rational way, in a thoughtful, well-planned way, has made an enormous difference, uh, not just on this project, but in, in others. It's just an example of what good financial planning can make happen in a city like ours. We've got to do better than most places. We don't have money growing on trees, believe it or not. And so good planning counts for an awful lot, and ours is the one who, who uh, leads the way. Um, this project couldn't have happened without the strong support of uh, the city council. Uh, the city council uh, has been very effective in making sure that taxpayer dollars are well spent um, and has been a big supporter of our MSBA initiatives uh, along the way, especially uh, this project. And so uh, I just want to thank uh, all the members of the city council today, city council president Brian Gomes and uh, Ward 6. Councilor Joe Lopes couldn't be here today, but fortunately, Linda Morad, uh, City Councilor Large, uh, could be here today to say a few words on behalf of the City Council. So, Linda, I just ask you to come up and say a few words. I just want to say thanks for all of your support of this project. Thank you, thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everybody. I have to lower the microphone. So, it's an honor to be here today and to uh, represent the City Council. As Mayor Mitchell said, um, Councilor Lopes cannot join us today. Unfortunately, he's away at school. I keep telling Councilor Lopes that he can't teach an old dog new tricks, but he's there anyway. And he asked me to represent him today, and I'm happy to do that. Uh, this project, as everyone has said, is a long time coming. As a matter of fact, when Councilor Lopes was elected, this is the first meeting he attended in 2009, and he's been a strong advocate of the Taylor School being rebuilt, and he's been a strong proponent of it being built here at C-Lab. And so uh, he's happy to support this project, as am I. It's for the good of the students in the South End, another community school, which we are all strong supporters of, and look forward not only to the children uh, coming here, but to the other schools that hopefully we will build across the city in the years to come. So um, on behalf of Council Lopes and on behalf of the City Council, thank you for allowing us to be part of the uh, ceremony today. And we look forward not only to the construction, but to the ribbon cutting as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, Linda. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Council Moran. And uh, the last uh, um, set of folks that I want to recognize are the people who designed this thing. And that's um, uh, the Mount Vernon group, uh, headed by Frank Tedesco and George Figueredo. Uh, teaming up with Mike Josevec. Um, it's, a, it's a fabulous design, and I'm going to ask Frank to come on up and just uh, run through it real quickly with, uh, with us just so that people can be oriented to the nature of the project. But uh, Mount Vernon Group and Frank have been on a roll in New Bedford. Uh, in the last uh, you know, several years, last 10 years, they, they designed uh, all three brand new middle schools, the Lincoln School, and just this summer, we cut the ribbon on uh, the, a, a major downtown development, the $8 million expansion of the Whaling Museum. Uh, that was the work of Mount Vernon Group, and it looks fabulous. It's well-designed, it's functional, it's beautiful, and, uh, and it's really a, a landmark, another landmark uh, that uh, Frank and his team have, have set in place in our city uh, for generations to come. So, Frank, I just ask you to come on up and and uh, explain a little bit about, uh, explain the design a little bit, and uh, I want to thank you again for all of uh, your brilliant work here. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks. Well, again, it's a real honor to be here. And real quickly, it's a fairly straightforward addition. Um, you can see, a, if you get a chance to come up later, you'll see a red line that goes through it, and that's where that existing building is, and everything is out front of that. So it's a pretty straightforward. We're adding a gymnasium, classrooms, and over on the far left, you'll see the, the blue, there's four science rooms that will remain science rooms year round so that the kids can still be uh, experiencing the C-Lab uh, program 
And uh, so I think those are the main features of this uh, simple addition. We hope it's a great addition to the neighborhood. Just very briefly, uh, my father, who founded this firm, just turned 95. And he asked me how things going down in New Bedford. And I said, you yeah, okay. And then he asked me to tuck my shirt in. <laughs> so, but uh, one of the things is education is really the key. My father went to Boston College and Harvard, studied architecture at Harvard under Walter Gropius on the GI Bill. So he is really a great advocate of that and still sharp as a tack and stays on top of us. Thank you. I've been thinking about it, and I'm not going to go to college. What are you saying? You've got to go to college. Well, they offered me a job, and I want to buy some new stuff, like uh, a new phone, a car. Son, college is much more important than a new car. No, Mom, it isn't. Yes, son, it is. No. Yes. No, Mom. Anyways, it's my decision. Your decision. Okay, well then decide what degree you're going to get because you will go to college. Their tomorrow depends on your words today. The Hispanic Scholarship Fund has the information you need to help your kids go to college and have a better future.